All right, everybody. Hello. Welcome to the Team Driven Team call for tonight. I believe it's the 29th of August. It could be the 30th. I can never keep track. We have a guest speaker tonight, and her name is Amanda Wright. So as a lot of you know, um, I did the Beachbody Classic this uh, summer for Summit, and it was a really cool experience. And I was part of a group, a private group, just like we all run, except it was full of coaches that were competing in this classic. And so we really started sharing in that group, asking questions, sharing meal plans, giving each other support, and just generally trying to figure out what the hell we were doing because most of us didn't know. There were some professionals that competed. There were some people that had done it before, but there were a lot of us that were rookies and we're just trying to do something great for ourselves and set a big goal. But as I, as I watched people progressing, I think about two months before the actual competition, I picked Amanda as the front runner. Like I thought she was going to take the whole thing home. But what was really cool also was watching her kind of grow in her confidence change. Um, I, I think I see it in my challenge groups with my own customers and I saw it in that group with her. And since Summit, I have watched her business explode because we became friends on Facebook. Now, I didn't know her exact SC numbers or anything like that until we set up this call, which she's kind enough to do for us. But what I really wanted her to speak to you guys about is I titled this call The Power of Sharing Your Story because I really think that that is something that she finally lived up to and started owning um, just around through this journey and since this journey. And I think that's been a key factor in her business changing. So I wanted her to share with that about all of that experience and anything else she feels is relevant. You don't have to stick to what I say, but um, I wanted her to share with you guys tonight because I think that we all have our own story and everybody's is different. Like mine is, is my miscarriage and my depression and, and finding community through coaching and losing a hundred pounds, but not everybody has a hundred pounds to lose. Not everybody has a huge tragedy to overcome, but we all have something. And the power of this journey is finding your own voice and being true to yourself and, and learning to be confident and comfortable in who you are. And I think that she has done an amazing job of this. I think that she has, um, maybe even surprised herself a little bit. And I am really looking forward to hearing what she says. So I hope you all have pen and paper handy. I know I do. I'm going to be taking notes and listening because this girl is, like I was saying, if you were on just before, um, she just joined as a coach last July. And as many of you have heard me say, like, where are you going to be a year from now? Will you be here a year from now, two years from now? five years from now, like Carl was saying at Summit and Michael was saying at Summit, um, you got to commit to yourself that this is something that you're really going to do. And it doesn't mean you have to run full speed ahead. It doesn't mean that you can't set your own pace, but it does mean that you can't kind of dabble and dip a toe in and expect the results of someone who is going to go for it full speed and sees themselves still here next year. So I'm excited to hear a little bit of her story and whatever she'd like to share with us tonight, because I think that that will be really enlightening for all of us and inspiring for me as well. So I'm going to turn the microphone over to you, girl, and let you take it away. And then at the end, we'll open it up for questions, guys. So jot them down if you have them as you go. And um, I know right now she is working crushing SC. And I might be your highest numbers ever. So let's hear it, girl. All right. Well, um, this is my very first call tonight. So you guys are uh, lucky to be the first ones. Um, yes, I am currently um, SC20 right now. Um, I just beat my record. My record was 18. Um, so I just hit 20 this week. Um, and I also have five or six six people already saying yes and signing up on the first as well. So how, how, how am I hitting the S plus 20 and how, you know, do I already have all these people ready to go? Um, well, first I'm going to start with kind of give you a little update on my story. Um, and, um, get you, uh, caught up on my life. So, I started with Beachbody, like my first workout six years ago. Um, I've only been a coach for a year. It took my coach like two years to get me to become a coach. Um, I started um, when I was young. I had um, 
I was very self-conscious and I was very worried about my weight at a very young age. Uh, the older I got, the, the more self-conscious I got, which turned into depression, which led to an eating disorder. Um, I had that eating disorder for seven years, I believe. Um, and I, uh, I turned to Beachbody to help me get through that because I saw there was, you know, meal plans. I saw, you know, there was workouts and schedules and I had no idea how to, how to get healthy. I had no idea how to get better, but I knew I needed to do it. Um, I had a little girl at the time. My husband was in the military. He was deployed. Um, so I was always alone and I just had nobody there to help me we move far away from our family. Um, and so that's when I found Beachbody. Um, I have a lot more of my story to that, but it's a really long story. So I don't want to keep uh, just uh, trying and uh, shorten it up for you. Um, but over this past year, um, I hadn't told my whole story. I told my story about being depressed. I told my story, you know, about my struggles, but I didn't tell anybody about the eating disorder, mainly because I was ashamed and I just wasn't ready to share that part of my story. Um, but over this past year, I've grown so much. Um, I found my voice and I found my passion and I just become fearless. And it's because of this business and, um, and it's an, I just felt that it was finally time to share my story because it's, it was time for me to be honest. Uh, when I first started Beachbody coaching, I came out with my story and, um, you know, I was, I told people about, you know, my depression and I did a video of it. And that video was huge because people could see my honesty and they could see the real me. Um, Uh, I lost my place. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, <laughs> but, but um, um, let me skip up ahead a little bit. Um, this last April, I took a huge leap and I signed up for the classic, um, and I announced what I was doing. I announced my goals. I announced to um, all of my fans and all of my friends and my family, I announced what I was doing online and I was showing them, um, my goals and I was showing them my struggles and I was showing them the entire process. The whole way through, I shared everything with them. Um, and during, you know, my whole prep, I continued to run my business. Um, I continued to make connections with my warm market and along with my cold market. Um, Suddenly, friends started becoming very interested in what I was doing, and I also started joining um, competition groups and forums on Facebook that, um, and started showing what I was doing from home and showing my work and sharing my story. And, you know, a lot of them couldn't believe who had hired coaches and all of this were like, what the heck? She's doing all this from home? Like, they were just blown away. Um, about two to three months before my competition, my business started slowing down. I didn't hit a uh, success club for those few months before competition. Um, and I was getting a little worried, but I knew that I was setting a bunch of seeds and I was planting all these seeds and I knew there were people watching me and following my story. Um, but, um, so I was, I was still inviting and I was still working on my business, but the reason why I wasn't getting a lot of feedback is because these people wanted to see what I was doing. They wanted to see me on that stage, and that's, that's when they were going to decide, all right, this girl's for real. Um, so when the competition came and I took second place, my business just exploded um, because, you know, I did it. Like, I showed all these people that – what what Beachbody does is it works. Like I just got second place in a competition working at home by myself without a coach, without any help. I figured it all out. And um, people would just saw how, you know, amazing that work was and how well it works. And um, the, um, 
And it wasn't, you know, it wasn't because I took second place in the competition. And it was, it was because I just, I did it on my own and I did it with Beachbody and they, it just completely opened their eyes. Um, they, <clears throat> the, that same week of competition, I signed up four new coaches on my team. Um, and I made success club 20. I sold programs that weren't challenge packs. Um, but they still wanted to do the body beast program and all of that. Some of those were the bikini competitors who, uh, who just wanted to do the, the, uh, programs because they already had all the nutrition and stuff with their coaches. Um, during that time, also the week after my competition, I decided to share my entire story, you know, about the eating depression, eating disorder, about the depression. Um, I decided to do a live uh, Facebook, like the Facebook video live. Um, and, and after that, I had so many people um, messaging me and, you know, talking to me and telling me, oh my gosh, like your story is my story. Like I had no idea and they're wanting help. And I have people, you know, who are like I am right now that I'm helping. And I have people who were in the past who want to stay on the right path that I'm helping. Like it might, it just exploded to a whole new different you know, group of people that I can connect with just because I, you know, was sharing my story and because I, you know, came out with who I really was and I was completely honest with them. Um, <clears throat> so, um, so first of all, I would, to give for advice on um, just kind of sharing your story. Um, just bite the bullet and, and share your whole story. Um, go live. Don't, don't type it up in, on Facebook or whatever, because people can't see your true, like raw emotion and they can't, they can't see that honesty behind it. If, if it's just something that you type up, um, I was scared to death when I did my first video. I'm pretty sure that I recorded it like 20 times before I even, um, <laughs> I even put it online. I like had the lighting perfect and I had everything perfect. Um, like I was scared to death because I was, I was always a like just kind of reserved type of person. I wasn't ever one to just step up and, you know, record videos of myself and put it for everybody to watch and judge and see. Um, but the number one thing I heard when I became a coach was be uncomfortable with being uncomfortable. So, <laughs> um, and that's so true. I mean, you have got to step out of your element because if you don't, then I mean, you're just not going to get very far if you just stay reserved and you don't share your story and share your life and your passion. Um, and another thing that I would suggest is to, you know, set a goal um, and then announce it no matter what it, what it is, no matter if it's a competition or just a smaller goal, just set that goal and announce what you're doing and share your journey to reach that goal. Um, people are going to watch as you work to reach it. They're going to see your dedication, your motivation, and that's going to inspire them as well. Um, work your business while reaching that goal by making connections with people and groups, you know, that relate to that goal. So for me, I did the competition. So I was making connections with other com competitors, bikini competitors and groups and stuff like that. So I was working my business um, by, you know, joining those groups and um, that are related to what my goal was. So whatever your goal is and whatever you announce that you want to do, like find something that relates to that so you can work it. Um, maybe you've already shared your story. Uh, maybe you've already told everybody your story. Um, but honestly, I would be surprised if, the story that you started with is the same story that you have now. Um, you know, things change over the years. If you, if you came out with your story two years ago, is that the same story? Um, is that the same story that, that what you're living now has your life changed at all since then? Um, and if it's not, then you need to revisit it. You need to revisit that story and you need to 
you know, tell, revise it and, you know, tell that new story because we change and things happen and, um, and, um, let's see, and uh, <laughs> lose my spot. <laughs> but um, over time, I mean, we change and, you know, even in this business, like this business has grown me so much and it's just be it helps me become more of a confident person and it just really um, it really helps me come out of my shell and it got me ready to share you know my big story and you know about my eating disorder and then the stuff that I never really wanted to share before but I knew that it needed to be done because I felt that there was a lack in um, a lack in the I didn't know I didn't think that people really we're seeing the whole me and I I honestly think that people can see through you whenever you're not being 100% honest um, so and honest is honesty is a huge huge thing to me so I kind of felt like that I was lying to everybody by not telling my full story um, you know people need to see that that real that real raw true you and the videos I'm telling you do a video um, because people can see that, um, you know, people just need more than just those words, and um, and it just really helps you connect with them. Um, let's see. I don't know. I felt like this was a lot longer when I typed it out, but now, <laughs> now I'm like, all right, well, I guess that's all I got. That's that's okay. You did good. So. <laughs> When I, I wrote down a couple questions as we went, and I was debating yeah. whether to interrupt you or not when you were like trying to find your place. But uh, <laughs> some of the things you touched on at the end when you were going over um, your tips, and that is, mm -hmm. I want to make sure that everybody knows that neither of us is saying you have to do a competition. That's not the message no. that I want you to take away from this. What I, what I think Amanda reinforced, and exactly what I try and tell my coaches. And I think I do myself since I very first started this, this business. And there's a reason that I've hit success club 10 for 28, 29, 30 months in a row. Every time is because I set a goal and I stick to it and I show people that I can finish it. So mm -hmm. when she said people were like kind of crickets right there leading up to the competition. It's not because they wanted to see if she'd get first place. It's because they wanted to see if she was going to follow through, if she was going to do it. And while she had, you know, what's funny about you adding people, I loved your tip about make connections for people who are related to the goal you're setting. I need to be better at that. And I think that's a great tip. If you're a mom trying to lose baby weight, find communities about losing baby weight. If you're someone who's had a bariatric surgery and you're trying to do this the healthy way, find groups for that. If you um, maybe wish you hadn't done something in your past, then maybe that's the piece you need to come out with. You know, you need to, like she said, get, I always say with my um, yoga and stuff, comfortably uncomfortable. So I liked when you said, get comfortable getting uncomfortable. Um, people do pick up on that and it's very valid. And if you can show people, you know, in my first uh, thing I did was I completed Insanity and um, I had people reach out to me that weren't 250 pounds. So uh, it's not that they needed to lose what I needed to lose, but I had people who were 130 pounds and in, in a size zero say, I can't believe you did that. I can't do that. Help me. And I'm like, are you talking to me? Because I'm like 230 pounds, like, you know, and that's when I started realizing that you should never count anyone out. But like you were saying about making connections with people in the groups related to the goals you're working on, maybe an action step for after this call is to assess your story and where you're at and then find those things that make you you and maybe what things you haven't really told people about. And I think a great call to action for everyone on this call would be to go live tomorrow with a piece of your story, it doesn't have to be the whole thing, but a piece of it that you haven't shared yet and tell people. Um, I think looking at your story and what you talk about in the beginning versus where you are now is an exceptionally excellent piece of advice too. Because um, when I started, I just wanted to lose some weight. And um, when I spoke at the Portland Super Saturday 
in front of Carl and all of corporate and all that. That was a huge thing for me because I it was scary as hell to get up in front of all those people. And that was my big goal at the time was to, to um, tell people about my miscarriage and my depression and getting past that. And then I have people to this day that message me. I mean, even last week on a post I did, people were commenting about how they've been inspired by me since they saw me speak at that Super Saturday. And moms and people who, who connect with me because they've lost a child or they had a sister who lost a child. And my sharing that never intended for that result. It just intended for me to put it all out there and reach as many people as I could and give them a reason to hope. So Sierra, tell your man, thanks for the eye candy during the call. <laughs> so I saw him walking around in the kitchen there. <laughs> but let's see. So I noted that. And I also said, I want to ask you like, how afraid were you? Cause I saw your live video um, uh -huh. when you put it out there that you had been struggling with it, with this eating disorder. Were you afraid of the kickback and the negative pushback? I was, what held me so long from sharing it was um, one, I, my family, like they had, they didn't, I mean, they knew, but they didn't know. Uh, we never talked about it. Um, and I never really said anything because I didn't want my mom to blame herself, which, you know, I know that she, she did anyways, of course, but, you know, I think I tried to protect her. And that, and um, like what I said in the in the video, is I didn't want to be known as the girl with an eating disorder. I didn't want, you know, I didn't because I was just I was always self conscious and I was always worried about what people thought about me all the time. Um, so you know, I finally realized that you know I'm not the girl with the eating disorder. I was that was and it was part of my life, and so I just felt like the you know it was time to share it because it, it's not who I am anymore. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I say all the time, kick fear in the face. I mean, they, one, one training call I heard from Bob Lucido, our upline um, multi-star diamond millionaire, one of the founding coaches, he's on the coach advisory board. He knows what he's talking about. And one thing he says is um, the thing that scares you the most is probably the thing you need to be talking about. Yeah, if definitely. It, if it makes you clench your butt a little bit, like, ah, I can't talk about that. that might be the thing you need to be talking about. I know, I bet you never heard, thought you'd hear that on a team call. <laughs> but that's, that's me. Welcome to my team. So, <laughs> so let's see. And then also I wanted to point out that you said you had four people sign up as coaches, but um, you had a lot of people buy Body Beast Challenge Packs in the challenge group from watching you do that. You know, I would have – never thought that people might be interested in me as a coach doing a body beast, uh, body beast at home doing this competition because, um, they are at this higher level or they have personal trainers or they have nutritionists. And what you did was you put yourself in there anyway. And then people mm -hmm. came to you because of that. And that just goes to show you, you know, you can't prejudge people and who they might connect with. Um, you know, you never know who's going to touch someone else's heart and people will sign up with who they're going to sign up with or switch to be coached by who they're going to switch with based on who they relate to and not, I mean, if they just want to find a body beast, they could Google it and buy it off Amazon girl. They wanted it from you because they were touched by you and they related to you. So, you know, don't count anybody out and just, own your shit, basically. <laughs> own your story. So I hope that everyone on this call already knows that you should have a goal and you should be um, set. Let me see. Where are the before and after pics you shared on the call post from April to the classic? Um, yeah, your before photo, Amanda? That was, um, no, that was from right after I had baby three. Mm -hmm. So that was, um, Two, two and a half years ago uh -huh. to now. So when you started your like healthy beach body? My, thing. well, redoing it. Yeah. Cause I originally mm -hmm. started like six years ago mm -hmm. um, you know, when I was getting out of my eating disorder to help me with that. And then after I had baby three, I was kind of sinking down into that um, like depression mode again. So I knew I needed to 
get back up. And then that's when I started off again. Mm -hmm. My coach finally talked to me into him and coach. (laughs) And I know part of your story, uh, I didn't know you could do this. Can you give advice on how you talk to people that you don't know? Um, I don't know what you mean by, I don't know you could do this, Ashley. Do you mean like um, adding people from other groups, like how she was talking about the bodybuilding groups or whatever, the competition groups? Let's see if that's what she meant. Or you didn't know you could chat, maybe? Oh, the chat? Maybe she just means the chat, yeah. Can you give advice on how you talk to people? Yeah, go ahead and... Uh, um, I mean, when I just go, when I go in the groups, like I just go in the groups and I just share my, you know, my pictures and my stuff. And I'm like, Hey, I'm working out at home. This is where I'm at. I'm doing a competition. Like, or even if you're doing a goal to lose mommy weight, you know, just make a post in the, in the mommy group and be like, Hey, I'm on, you know, I'm so, I'm so, I just had a baby and I'm trying to lose weight. Um, I'm doing beach body. Is there anybody else who like who works out or, you know, just stuff like that. Just, you know, you don't have to go in there, you know, saying you're a coach and come join me, but um, just be friendly. Like maybe there's a mom in there who has kids the same age as you, like go in there and, you know, talk to them about that. You're, Hey, you know, I know you have kids the same age. Maybe we could chat sometime about, you know, things that come up with Mm -hmm. our kids, you know, milestones that come with their kids, just stuff like that. And what I do in the groups that I'm in is like, I'm in a mom group with some moms that had, you can find them for like the date your kid was born on even and like whatever, or like August babies, 2010 and have all the people who have Olivia's age kids because you have like struggles as they grow and you can join groups like that. And, um, like I don't go in there and say, Hey, I'm a coach to contact me. I just respond to all the posts in the group when I have time and I have five minutes at the hospital where I'm on break, I will check in my groups and check my messages, cruise Facebook and say hi to some people. Same thing everyone you do when you're not a coach, right? And then I will like, if I go in one of those groups, I will post a comment, answer on the thread, whatever, um, and just share what I'm doing. I don't actually like solicit people because I don't want to come across as spammy. But then if somebody like what happened this week in my mom group, which I've been in for like six months, um, this particular group, someone added me to it. I was like, usually it's like a Jamberry party and I'm like, delete <laughs> or a LuLaRoe group. I'm like, ah, no, <laughs> but I, I need another one of those. Like I need a hole in the head, but you know, and don't do that by the way. Don't ever start a fitness group and just start throwing people in it without talking to them. Because like I tell my team, that is like, you are standing in your living room, folding laundry. And then all of a sudden, poof, you just dropped in the middle of some party. And you're like, where the hell did this come from? Nobody invited me to this. How did I end up here? That's like rude. Like talk <laughs> to someone first. But um, anyway, some, a mom posted a question in the group and she just said, I am so tired of feeling like this. I'm really sick of being overweight. Do any of the other moms have um, experience doing anything to get healthy? Has anyone lost some baby weight successfully? What have you done? And some um, isogenics girl got right on that and jumped on it. And I saw it, you know, a couple hours later and I just posted my before and after. And I just said, you know what? I've lost uh, 95 pounds. I've kept it off two years. I do it at home because I don't have time for the gym and I like to eat real food. And I said, you know, if you want to know more about it, I'd love to chat with you. Um, Send me a PM. And then I went and friend requested. So like 20 moms commented on that post. Oh, me too. I'm so sick of feeling like this. I went and friend requested every single one of them. And I replied to every single comment they had. Not saying, join my group. Here's the link to a challenge pack. You need to do the fix. I just related to the comment they said. And I was like, I know what that feels like. That sucks, you know? And I was like, there is hope on the other side. If you ever want to talk about it, I'm here. And I sent him a friend request. Once you've established a relationship, then you can message each other like once in a while. And, you know, if I see someone talking about something depressed, she says, I don't have any kids, but I'm wondering what other groups I could join. What do you like to do? Yeah, there's so many groups out there with so many different hobbies. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I was trying to tell my mom signed up as a coach recently too. And she's like, what kind of groups can I join? I'm like, well, you like to, you like to bow, like shoot your bow, like join a bow hunting. <laughs> I'm sure you there's you like to bow. bow hunting out there, like women who hunt, you know, stuff like that. Like 
any kind yeah. of hobby. I, I, I'm in a hiking group for Spokane. You know, the last time I had time to go on a hike, like a million years ago. But you know what? I would if I could. I like hiking, so I joined it. And one of these days, I might actually like lock these kids in the closet and go. But right now, no. But I'm in the group, and then when someone says, "Oh, where's a good place to hike?" I'm like, "Oh, I love this area." It doesn't mean I can't be in the group and participate. Um, you know, if anything, you're interested in really like. Um, there's something for every single medical condition. There's something for every single um, like depression survivors or um, moms who want to work from home or stay at home moms or um, healthcare workers or CNAs. Like on Instagram, I follow a, um, a funny nurse page where they just post like ridiculous jokes about patients that I can't really share on my Facebook because I would probably get fired, but they make me laugh. And so I follow them on Instagram and when I see somebody says something funny on that, I jump on and comment on that. Oh my God. I wish you could see this. Can anyone see this kid? He's making <laughs> faces at me through the slider. Anyway, like I, I join um, groups like that, that are other nurses. What do you do for a job, Ashley? Or is it just Beachbody? Which is great. I'm jealous, but I have two things. Okay. Military. Hello. You got, you got things like that. I know there's, I have some coaches in the military who are restricted on what they can post about, like on base and things like that. They have to be careful, but I work for the federal government. So I pretty much have jack tape over my mouth at work, but I still bring my Shakeology shaker and I still talk to people outside of work. And I still have a couple coaches on this team that are from that. But um, yeah, you can talk about any of those interests. You can be like retired air force, active duty air force, um, you could probably just search in the search bar on Facebook and look for um, women, fitness, military, anything like that. You can be like, there's just so many. You talk to people at work, never had a problem yet. Yeah, I have like a severe contract I have to sign that I'm not allowed to do anything on my phone, my internet, my anything while I'm at work, which if you ever, any of you follow me on Facebook, you know I'm at work like half of the day. So, um, if I can do it, you guys can do it, right? I, I have to yeah, go I mean, on to data on every break and go off the property on every single one of my breaks, which I take every break, which I used to never take them before coaching. And I walk my happy ass out and I sit by a bush and I message like a crackhead for 15 minutes because I have to, and I can't do it in the building because I have a clause in my contract that says I will not use government resources for an outside business. And that's a blanket statement that covers anything I might do. And that includes internet. So I mean, I would just start searching through and start looking for anything you can find um, that is an interest that you have. And yeah, I want to thank you for your service too. I mean, if you ever end up on hospice, I'll take care of you, but I hope I never see you. <laughs> so anyone else have anything you want to say? You asked if they have like a Facebook page because I, I live in a military town. So I know that, you know, here they have the, the ladies and stuff. They all have like a Facebook page just for them. So asking asking if they have an online group that you guys can that you can be a part of um, because they have them here. And you can go to groups on Facebook and search for groups you might be interested in. It will give you suggestions and you can scroll through. You could like sit there and make a list of try and make a list of 20 things you're interested in. I mean, you could love daffodils. You know, you can be and then be like in a group full of people who love daffodils. I bet it's the happiest group on Facebook. I mean, <laughs> you know, just find your thing and, you know, make it your jam and um don't be afraid to like look for new people that way. But I really think that everyone here should get comfortable being uncomfortable. Bite the bullet, like she said. Um, see if you're sharing your whole story. And don't be afraid to go live. And, you know, if you go live, that's a video. It's going to show more. But you can also post about that same thing with a regular post. Or you could share about it later. You can, you can write a blog post about it and say, if you want to read my whole story, go here. You can make a video and put it on YouTube and say, if you'd like to see more of my story, I just made this. I did that when I started. I made a, a video. I cried for like three hours while I made it. I put it on YouTube. Crystal McCabe on my team is a coach who found me on YouTube because she connected with part of my story. So there's a lot of different ways to find people. Um, but mostly I think it all comes down to being consistent and being yourself and being honest 
and then showing people. People are watching you, we always say. Well, they're not just watching you to see what you're doing. They're watching you to show them that you don't quit. Because if I struggle with quitting, why would I want somebody to help me who's going to quit on themselves, right? The best thing you can do for your business is consistently show someone you're going to start something and you're going to finish it and that you're doing it for the right reasons, you know? I think that's, that's huge. Yeah, Crystal, that's how she found me, she says in the comments. And we both work in healthcare and we were both in nursing school and we both... Um, she is now. I'm a dropout. And then we both, um, that's it. She has a dog, no kids. That's really it. She lives on the East Coast. I live on the West Coast. But we're able to connect on a lot of different levels and have similar, similar issues that we've found. Um, I know, Ashley, with the military, there's a lot of groups and support for people who, women in general, and people who struggle with um, staying fit after boot camps over saying, um, you know, how about keeping up with the, the men and owning your shit and showing them that you can do just as good as they can. I mean, there's a lot of different groups I'm sure that you could connect with. Catherine Wilburn on my team is retired, uh, military and she's a badass, you know? So, all right, you guys, I think that's it. Unless we have any other questions. No, no. All right, I'm gonna be stalking each one of your pages tomorrow to see you do a live video and share a piece of your story, hopefully. And just be authentically you. You know, if you're being yourself, you don't have to apologize for it. Um, you know, just share, be yourself, be honest, and it's easier than you think. Really, it's scary before you do it. Oh, and after you click post and you're done, just walk away for 10 minutes. I swear that makes it a lot easier. Because if you sit there waiting to see what everyone's going to say, you might give yourself a panic attack. <laughs> but you might be surprised. Go away, do it, and then say, after this, I'm going to go like do my workout and take some Energize and go do your workout. You might want to take the Energize before the video, but you might sound like this. And then do your workout and then come yeah. back and look afterwards, you know? And don't be afraid. Remember, if 50 people don't like that post, it doesn't matter. You're not trying to find 50 people. You're trying to find one person to help. And if that connects with one person, then that's, that's what we're here for, right? So no fear or a little bit of fear. All right, you guys, yeah. thanks for joining I, us. You know, I was like, oh, did I really just do that? Did I really just post that video? <laughs> hey, and you even, I'm so scared. And you even practice. I don't think I've even ever showered for a video. So you're like 10 steps ahead of me. <laughs> but you know what? Sometimes it's as simple as saying like, like I did one once that I've gotten several emails from that I did live and I shared it to YouTube and I was like throwing my food together at the last minute and I realized I had like 10 minutes to work and I was like, screw it, record this. And I was like, this is what you do when you're late and you're like, ah, and I opened my fridge and I had a couple things prepped and I showed how that helped me. And people were like, oh my God, my life would be so much easier if I had some chicken in the fridge. And I'm like, yeah, it's not that hard. See, I don't cook gourmet meals every damn day. But um, somebody who like thinks they need help from that, you know? People like real life. Like they like what's going on now and real people. And when Thank you here. mess up and screw up and all of that, they like it, the real stuff. So uh, I think, you know, you connect so much better with people when you're in the moment. Yeah. Do you ever notice how popular the Kardashians were in the beginning? Because they were a freaking hot mess. And everyone wanted to see what hot mess ass thing they were going to do next. <laughs> now we're all like, oh, it's the Kim and Kanye show and it's kind of boring. And, and it's all like made and nobody watches it. But in the beginning, yeah. everyone wanted to see what they were up to because everyone was like, can you believe these people? And <laughs> I'm not saying you have to be a hot mess, but I am saying make your mess your message. Whatever it is that makes you you. Um, Brianne, she did an awesome post today with her little kids and talked about, yeah, I saw that and I talked about her kids and, um, what they were saying to each other, having this little conversation while she was doing her workout. And you guys should go check that out and give her some love on that post. I was like, Oh my gosh, that's it right there. That's what it's for. You know, for some of us, that's, that's the whole thing is what our kids are going to think. And that's a big thing for me. I want my daughter to see me doing healthy things. Because kids do what they see. They don't do what we tell them. Otherwise, I would be on Atkins, The Zone, Fit or Fat, um, all the different diets my mom did over the year. 
uh, of my life and I would have nothing in the house but some like uh, corn like bran is what she used to buy and that was all we ever had in the house corn bran <laughs> corn bran nobody came to our house after school because there was no food <laughs> you know <laughs> and I saw her she was happy when she was in shape and she was depressed when she wasn't and she went up and down and up and down and I can tell you one thing when I looked at that little girl starting to grow up and I was like I do not want her to be that not that I don't love my mom, but I don't want her to be where this cycle that my grandma and my mom and I did, and that is my past, and I'm not doing it anymore. So that's a big part it's of my message. Exactly what happened with me, like you know, my my generation from you know great grandmother and all passed all that worrying about their weight and talking about being fat and this and that, and so then my mom did it, and I saw her do it you know and then I had my daughter but I took it you know to the next extreme and I'm like you know no this it's gonna stop with me you know I don't want my daughter to go through what I'm going through but we don't talk about you know we don't talk about fat or stuff like that we don't talk about eating stuff because it'll make us fat we talk about eating good food because it makes us healthy and you know like the sweet treats make our bellies all yucky like we don't we don't say stuff about you know bad, good, bad, skinny, stuff like that. Olivia says to me, when she wants something junky, you know, which, of course, she can have because, you know, she still gets to have a life. She's still a kid. But she'll come up to me and she'll say, hey, Mommy, is it a once in a while? <laughs> you know, it's like we can have things like that once in a while. We just don't have them every damn day. So yeah. she'll say, hey, Mom, is it a once in a while? And I never know what it's going to be if it's a treat or if it's like a something fun, like a going to the amusement park or something, you know, she's like, Hey, is it a once in a while? I'm like, I don't know. Where's this going? But it, Oh, she'll be like, well, I wanted to know if I could have some of dad's crackers, which are like wheat thins. I'm like, Oh, okay. And then I feel like the, like this nicest mom in the world because I let her have like five wheat thins, but you know, like, Whatever, it, it, the point is, is like that video I put up the other day, what, I didn't intend to share that. It was just supposed to be for our Body Beast group because we're doing that pull-up challenge. And I'm listening to it afterwards and I'm listening to Olivia talk in the background. And I'm like, she's like, she is one strong mommy. And I was like, oh my gosh, I had to hold it up like to my ear and sit there and write down what she was saying when I decided to caption it because I didn't, I couldn't hear her when I was doing it. I didn't know it was there till I went to upload it to the group. And in fact, I uploaded it to the beast group without captions. Cause I just saw it in that. And then I was like, oh my God. But she says she did, she worked really hard for her competition and she this and that. And just hearing her say all those things, like that tells me that she's getting the message that I'm healthy and that I'm strong and I'm doing the right things. And, you know, she's getting the right message. We want to raise a generation of healthy kids. And I want to be a part of a generation of healthy moms, not a generation of people who sit around on the couch and the person I used to be, watch my kids play and say, yeah, just stay over there because okay I might still do that a little but <laughs> like go over there but still like, I know if I need to chase can you imagine if I wasn't in the shape I'm in now with beast mode baby he would probably burn down the city because I can barely chase him down now so I can't imagine 100 pounds ago what I would do that kid would probably I don't know I have no idea all right let's wrap this up Thank you guys for joining us. If you have any questions, you can post them below. I'll post the replay in both team pages tonight. You can post questions on that. I'll get to Amanda with them. I know someone asked if she hired a dietitian. I know the answer to that is no. She followed um, the beast meal plan, right? Until after the end and then you got down, you did countdown to competition? Or yes. Yeah, I thought so. Yep, I did that. And then, and then whatever. Um, Chris the peak said, week. Yeah, the peak week. You did that, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. which the peak week yeah. is like not real life, peak, guys. The competition. Is. Yeah, peak week is like just suck it up and know you're uh, eating dry chicken all week. That's all you're doing. <laughs> dry chicken and limiting your water and sweet potatoes. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I was talking to Carl at the Elite Ball, and he was like, oh, I'm thirsty. And I go, here, you can have my water. I had two bottles of water. I handed my water. Carl Dykler, the CEO. He goes, really? I'm like, yeah, sure. I'm like, are you hungry? I got chicken too. And I pulled out a bag of chicken in my ball gown out of my purse. And he was like, are you for real? <laughs> it was so funny. And then I ended up talking to Sagi later. That's the same thing. He's like, 
here, let's take a picture. Like, put your purse over there. And I set my purse down and he saw the chicken in it. And he's like, come here. And he's like, come here, let me tell you. And that's the picture where I took where you saw us both going like that where he was yeah. talking to me about how to do your spray tan. He goes, you're going to go back and lie down like this. But he was like, okay, now you get my attention and we got to have a conversation because he saw he was working my ass off for it. I didn't win. I didn't even get top 10, but I did it. And you know what? Nobody who has messaged me since that competition has said, okay, coach me because I want to do a fitness competition like Amanda has. But lots of people have messaged me because I set a goal. I said I was going to do it. And I finished it. And that's all I've done for the last two years for this business. Each program, one after another, after another. And that's the goal. Yvette is competing in 17. I know Ashley uh, from is going to two. I know I'm going to give it a goal again. We have to break Amanda's kneecaps first so she can't win. Get her out of the way. <laughs> Quadzilla over there. But we might have a shot. No, but I think I'm going to do it too. And I think that if I do it again, this time was to participate. Next time would I just have to go like go for it, like all in. So I just did something big and faced my fear. So, you know, I have a plan. I know exactly what my goals are for the rest of the year. I'm doing Pio right now and I'm doing the Boston or the Boston Marathon, the Portland Marathon in October. Right when that finishes, I'm doing 21 days of the ultimate reset with the 21 day yoga retreat. So I can talk about that. That'll be my nice cleanse before I hit beast hard and I will do beast again until the competition. So I'm giving my body a nice recovery couple months from weightlifting and it's hard. I miss it, but you know, I, other people are following and saying, okay, well you're not, um, you know what? I post a picture in a dress and people got all excited over that because I didn't look like a, like a man in a dress, you know, because just because I lift weights doesn't mean I can't look good. And it doesn't mean I want to be like my husband to be like, I'm Hans, I'm Franz, you know, like I want to be fit and I want to feel good. So, you know, people will connect with you with those little different things, you know, but yeah, that's, so I have my plan. I know exactly what programs I'm doing until December. Oh, I think I threw in 30 days in there too of the new uh, court of force. Because after the ultimate reset, I cannot go straight into hard-ass weightlifting. I need to build my way up to it. So that's a 30-day program. So I'm going to do that for 30 days and get my fitness level back. Because during the ultimate reset, you don't work out. And then after that, it's going to be like on like Donkey Kong. So I'm excited. All right, you guys. Thank you. We'll post the recording. Have a good night. Amanda, Bye. thank you so much for your time. Bye, everyone. Bye.